Hi, and welcome to Animalia, the podcast. I'm Natasha, and thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to check out the website, animaliathepod.com, for new episodes, archived episodes, and much more. Search and subscribe to Animalia, the pod, on your favorite podcast platform, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, or YouTube for new episodes. You should also like and follow Animalia the Pod on Facebook and Instagram. And if you'd like to appear on the podcast, send an email to animaliathepod at gmail.com. This week on Animalia, we talk about horses with a woman who grew up, worked with, and now rehabilitates them in the perfect tropical setting of Tobago. She's the friend and companion to a herd of 12 horses, as well as rescue cats and dogs. She's German-born, but found and shares love through her connection with animals and nature. Please welcome to Animalia, Veronica LaFortune. Veronica, thank you so much for speaking with us on Animalia. Mm, it's an honor. Thank you for knocking on my door, on our door, Natasha. You're very welcome. Start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. I mean, your accent says you're not from Trinidad or Tobago. So tell us about your life growing up mm-hmm. with animals. I grew up in South Germany in a little village. And um, I'm the oldest uh, of, I have two siblings. and. Um, I was the only one who was into animals. The other ones, you know, they're more uh, technician, musicians. And uh, I always was the one who brought home frogs I found on the road. And um, <laughs> I, I even made a little cemetery on our driveway up to to the garage. I had a little cemetery for all the animals I found on the road because we were living at, uh, beside a busy road. And uh, it just brought so much joy to my my heart and my life to give them attention, even to the dead ones. Yeah. So you did you have pets, dogs or cats, growing up, or just? So I finally got a dog when I was nine years old, but I did have um, cats before, but they were never really allowed to live indoors. You know, I had a I remember a rabbit. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. But you know, my first uh, body was a dog, and then. When I was 11 years old, I got a horse and the whole area started to open up. And, you know, I'm very, very grateful for my parents at the end that they supported my passion, which now became my life. Yeah. Gotcha. So how did you make your way from Germany to mm-hmm. Tobago? So in, in 2004, my friend Jean Lyons, who is actually a famous gospel and blues singer from Tobago, who... Um, lived um, six months in Frankfurt, six months in Tobago. She invited me to come with her to play mass, to enjoy hearing the cockery course. To, she wanted to share her hometown with me. And um, yeah, she's my guardian angel. She's my dear friend. Um, she now lives in Tobago and she was the one who brought me to Trinidad and Tobago in 2004. Right. And you decided you loved it so much that you would stay. <laughs> so the, the spirit of um, Trinidad and Tobago, yeah, I was 29 and I was ready for a, for a change in my life. You know, we have these phases we go through and yes. being here on the island, then going back to Germany after three and a half weeks, something just told me I want to go back. And um, I met a special person also, Lennon LaFortune who is now my husband. He lived in Trinidad, so I was actually moving to Trinidad first. Uh, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a country girl. I, I need to be in the village. So we both moved to Tobago six weeks later. <laughs> and um, we're still living here in Buco Point since 2006. Lovely. Mm-hmm. That's a romantic story, yes. And it was very special, you know. I didn't get into animals one time because I was still going back and forth to Germany. I, I was uh, freelancing and um, I had um, a great job around springtime and I had gr- a great job around winter time. And uh, so I spent six, eight weeks in Germany and then I came back to Tobago. So that was going on the, for the first year, first two years until we opened up our doors for animals and they gave me roots and they gave me now this is my home here. This is this is where I belong to. So thanks to all these beautiful animals which, which came into my life. <laughs> How did that start then? Why did you decide to start 
working with animals and why horses in particular? I mean, I know I myself am not very familiar with horses and I suppose you have to be living a certain kind of lifestyle to be able to interact with them. But was there anything that you noticed when you arrived and started living in Tobago about how we treat animals in general that was different to what you had already experienced? Yeah, I noticed that, you know, and um, well, you know, first of all, um, I would like to speak a little bit about what I did in, in Europe, in, in Germany. I was working actually in a in a horse show, in a in a big musical show where we toured with horses for eight months, 10 shows a week. And I got out of it in 2000 because I actually couldn't do it anymore. Me as a human, even I, I loved what I was doing. It was just too much. And um, the horses also and the animals there, they didn't have um, a life I think a horse would, would choose. They didn't go out grazing. They were living in little you know, stables and then the show and then the training and then the show. And then there was no, not much space to really just be a horse. You know, as a horse lover who was into horses since a long time, I had a secret wish. I wanted to have a horse in, in my yard. So we, we have this beautiful yard. And, you know, I was at the airport just uh, bringing back a friend who was going back to Germany who came and visited me. And um, another one tapped on my shoulder and said, you know, Veronica, do you know anybody who would like to have a horse? There's this horse up in Speyside and they want to develop the land. And she's living there for eight years and she needs to be moved. Um, I had a mission. so. Every Friday, I went up to Starwood, which is um, an estate behind Blue Waters Inn. A lot of people know Blue Waters Inn is a beautiful hotel. And I was looking for Jennifer, and she's a, still a beautiful chestnut mare, you know. And she was a free spirit, and she's still a free spirit, a wild horse, which wasn't minded by people. And um, I looked at her and said, wow, this horse, she's so beautiful and she doesn't need people. The horses I had, they needed people, they needed feed, they needed a blacksmith, they needed care and attention. But she was just that beautiful wild horse. And, you know, I needed her. So I had to find a way how to get her attention. And that was a, a whole new school for me. Coming from Germany as a horseback riding instructor, trying to control and to train and control and to train, now meeting that free spirit who lived in that beautiful big estate where there was a river. I saw uh, pineapples growing, mangoes growing, you know, lush green grass, a everything a horse likes. <laughs> and then, you know, like this little girl from Germany who wants to take her away and bring her to Buko, to the village now to live in my yard, you know, very selfish. So it took me actually six months until I gained her trust. So there was no training needed. So she basically unschooled me from everything I learned. And this is what I would like to feel, let people feel now when they come to being and healing with horses to our little yard here. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I know I've heard from people who've been around horses that they have a very calming spirit and you know you need to have that kind of spirit about you when you're around them as well but is it that horses are a little special i guess some, like dogs they are they're not just pets to some of us but they're also working animals and they also provide entertainment in some cases as as where you were working do you think it's incumbent then on persons who work with horses to have that kind of mindset as to to understand what they need to live their their best life to live to their full potential right i just wanted to, to throw in again this little story with jennifer i had to find out what she likes to get her attention and it's almost like rescuing a cat or a dog when you find that dog on the beach or this cat in the bush you know you have to be very patient this is a first big task for a human to be patient right because you cannot control a cat Correct. You can't control a, a stray dog. Correct. So this is me, a horse trainer from Germany, sitting in the bush there, and there is this horse. I cannot control the horse, and I cannot train the horse. How do I get the attention? Because I actually want to gain her friendship. I want to gain her trust. And um, there was so much 
very peaceful excitement inside of me that I had the patient and I went up there every Friday and after six months I was able to walk down the road with her. She was walking down the road with me. And you know, that was such a beautiful experience. I would do it any time again. There was no riding involved. And there was just this just two friends walking down the road. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So horses, yes, they're very sensitive. You know, I mean, a dog and a cat is also very sensitive. I, I look at horses now as something different as I looked at the horses before when I was working in the, in the horse show business. A horse has a personality just like a cat has a personality and you have your personality. Now, when we, for example, bring in or open up our doors for a new one, Maybe it came from the racing industry before. Maybe it was the school horse for jumping and dressage before. And then integrating it in a herd because horses are herd animals, um, not like cats. Cats are, you know, they, they love to live by themselves, many of them. But horses are herd animals who are looking actually for social integration. But most of these horses never had a herd. They were living in little kennels. So we let them in in our herd and then watching them to become what they're meant to be. You know, some of the horses, they came to us because they had mental or physical problems. But first, you just let them be themselves before you actually ask them to do something. So they're grazing outside and they're eating and they're finding their space in the herd and the family, just like a, a child would find a space in a new school, it takes some time and again, patience. And that is for, for us here, true joy to witness. It doesn't matter if it's volunteers or students or staff members or family members who watch that procedure. It's like when you open your door for a new animal in your home. It doesn't matter if it's a cat or a dog. Yeah, we have it here as well with horses. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it's it's very rewarding. So so you do rescue horses as well. We rescued so far fifteen. Yes, you know it. it we never really planned of doing what we now got into. It, it was two thousand six. Jennifer, and then a couple months later, another one. You know, a friend of mine heard of a horse who needed a new home, and and I wanted to give Jennifer a friend. So a horse shouldn't actually live alone. You know, they they need another horse. So another one came and um, we never really looked for another one. And people, you know, just ask us. And um, if it was possible, yes, we did open our doors. Animals also need a purpose, just like people need a purpose. So after adopting three horses, just having them grazing in the yard didn't really fulfill me and them as well, you know, the community members came around and they asked you, so how is it now? How do you groom them? And so what do you feed them? And so we started to share our passion and we started to invite community members and schools. And and then later on, we really needed some, to make some money. We started to walk with the horses on the beach and go swimming. And this is when we started to register our business being with horses, which we have been the last 14 years. And now COVID gave us a time. And I always tell the people, I just came um, from going out, going to the groceries. And when people see me and they say, you know, how are the horses? And I tell them, you know, actually, I think they, they planned that. That this is a two years holiday now. And we just want to run free on the beach. We're so fortunate. We got an exemption from the Ministry of Health we can go every day with them on the beach. So, you know, a herd of horses has a leader. So we walk the leader down, the rest follows. They run down the beach. Buku Bay is a beautiful, it's like a little dead end beach. They run down at the end of the beach. They go swimming, they come back, and then they graze the whole day. And they, in the evening, they go up to the park where they sleep. So this is our daily routine. And this is, I, I mean, put yourself in the animal place, you know. What a life. <laughs> It's like when I look at the cats these days, I say, you know what, I think I should learn from you guys. You just lay, you know, with so much leisure around. And um, when I go to the fridge, they come and follow me. Meow! <laughs> they don't do a thing. Yes. <laughs> They're not complaining. <laughs> they don't need meditation and yoga. They're just being cats, right? Yes, just, just being them. They're lovely, glorious, uncomplicated, living their lives, you know. 
so when we look at them and when we uh, yeah watch them and give them attention that is something which for me becomes very essential now in my life i would say living with animals yeah and having them in my family so we have a lot of family members there animals do the horses get along with the dogs and cats that yeah, you have around yeah. as well mm-hmm. what is that relationship like yeah some some dogs um like to chase them you know when some of the horses they're more spirited so we have some some dogs they're also more spirited they like to chase them horses are flea and fight animals um dogs they like to hunt but you know they know each other and there is a little game in between and they stop and um i trust the process well we did had in the past also an incident where a dog got kicked because he didn't stop you know some need to learn the hard way i was a little puppy you know but they have their way the animals do have their way of you know of Absolutely, understanding yes. each other and what yeah. each other needs right yes 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 they do what was the biggest challenge you think in setting up being with horses and by extension healing with horses what was the biggest challenge you had in establishing that mm. on the island so uh, being here at um Huko Point, where most people never had a horse close by in the early, it really felt like walking on glass, uh, where the villagers changed the side of the road when I came and walked that one horse down to the bay where I wanted to go with her for a little stroll or a swim. I didn't even ride at that point. And then, you know, they, of course, there is this white woman who then brings the horse into the village too, you know. And then my my husband, who is also not from Tobago, from Buko, a Trinidadian. So, yeah. but you know, I knew how to kind of work with that because um, in South Germany, Bavaria, where I grew up, that little village, people are also very conservative. What they don't know, they don't eat. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so it took a little while, and then yeah. now Jennifer had a foal, a filly, and that little baby horse is like having a little puppy, having a little baby kitten, kind of opened up the heart of people. And then we also got married in 2008 and you had this beach wedding and they kind of witnessed, you know, my family from Germany coming and his family from South Trinidad coming and people kind of got to know us a little more. They met my family, met his family. So people started to open up and then beside the children also adults started to become interested. And ask for horse money or ask for birthday ride. And slowly we grew. And then the community work where we started to invite schools, preschools, and also the specially abled homes and uh, orphanages. And then having villagers also volunteering their services. I think this was the key. It's a very rewarding entity. It's mission and vision. We're living here. Mm-hmm. What do you learn every day? How do you keep learning about what you do and what you want to accomplish? You know, I see um, there's a difference. So the empathy, what people have for animals. I'm hearing dogs at night, being in the kennel 24 hours, My our neighbors, you know, many sleepless nights, many sleepless nights. And in the early years, it was harder for me. Now... I um, was able to speak to some of our neighbors. Um, It didn't really change something. But I also know that if I want to live here, I need to learn to accept and tolerate certain things because otherwise I just create a conflict. What I can do on my part is that I can showcase the way I am dealing with horses, cats, dogs, animals, in the daily sessions, what we practice is I put myself in the animal's place. So especially the last years where we had a lot of visitors who support our business, our organization by booking tours with us. You know, I give an introduction and I speak about the start of being and healing with horses, the rescue or the walk. I think Jennifer rescued me. I didn't rescue Jennifer. (laughs) I walked Jennifer down. (laughs) Yes. And 
you know, and, and I speak with them, I tell them about um, how everything started. I speak about the personalities of the horses and then the horses are choosing the guests because horses feel people just like we feel other souls or cats and dogs feel other souls. So when there is a magnet, they come out. And if they don't come out, then, you know, we also have to respect and accept. This is how we, we deal with that. And people, while practicing that in our introduction, in our sessions, they truly understand what it is. Most people who come to Tobago for holiday, they want to have a break from whatever they are, you know, from business. And, you know, I tell them, you know, maybe you're working too much. Maybe you're in the office too much. Just like, like that dog who is in the kennel all the time. You, you know, you, you maybe just run on the beach more often and roll in the sand, yeah. you know. <laughs> can just get all, outside, all, all yeah. well-being, you know. So I can learn so much when I... When I put myself in the place of the animal. Yep. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And it is so simple and so easy. It is. You know, my husband often says about Tobago that um, even if you're going there for work, it, you feel like you're on vacation because that is the, the mood of the place. You know, it's it's so relaxing and um, and. I haven't been to Tobago in a while, so I am I am so envious of you. But what has been your worst moment or your lowest moment in this journey with um, being with horses? Mm, that's a very good question. Of course, when a when an animal is hurt, you would feel with them. It kind of brings down. It takes energy until you, you're going with the animal through the healing process because it's a part of the family. And, you know, we just had an accident three weeks ago um, where our little black horse, she, she jumped the fence at the end of the beach. And she wanted to run to the community field quickly to go to the grass. And um, our biggest horse, Simbu, he said, you know, I'm coming too. And he got stuck in the fence and and he fell down and he couldn't get up anymore. And he really cut himself uh, on this galvanized fence, which is sharp. And, um, you know, every morning uh, we are dressing it and it's healing well now. But it's, yep. that is always something which is it's rough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, you know, of course, I had um, I was now thinking of the incident I had with some neighbors. <laughs> that was a good while ago, about 10 years ago. They did... Um, car racing, drag racing. We have a, a main road here in Boko. And um, I was just bringing in the horses and these young guys racing their cars and really almost that little puppy just got away. And, you know, my, I just took that stone and I rode in front of the car because I really need to slow down that car. And uh, that was, um, that was a, a moment where I felt like, I am not understood. I'm not understood. I said, you know, on that road, there are so many children and dogs. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You know, I was like Cena, the warrior woman. And people looked at me like, wow. And, you know, actually, my husband had to stand up and had to buy beer for all the young guys because they were in range, you know, like these race cars. That's everything for them, right? They would spend their last penny on it. <laughs> So that was a moment which wasn't very nice because I, I was I didn't feel understood, but it was just my truth which came out. What motivates you to get up in, in the morning? Presently, to go down with the herd for a swim, for exercise, and then you know to give them what they need. All the animals up there to see them happy, and that is basically. Uh, my drive right now also um yeah to get up in the morning to to see their well-being and to care for them i've never ridden on a horse i've never been that close to a horse and i i think as as animals i mean i've always been around dogs and cats but i think for me personally as animals they're very fascinating because they have such a a long history of being close to humans, working for humans um, and alongside humans. And I don't think that generally they are given the, the kind of 
respect that they do because they are incredibly, to me, um, strong and resilient animals, very intelligent. And they, to me, I think people see them as just, you know, um, work animals and not necessarily as we would consider dogs and cats companion animals. And and I'm sure that in your experience, I mean, you would know better than me that they, they can be, in fact, very close to humans in the same way that dogs and cats can mm-hmm. be. And this is an experience, you know, we, um, we in, invite and we invited uh, people before. And um, I feel also in the future again that we open our park and it's like a little animal kingdom. It's a three-acre park, which we created with benches and slides and hammocks. And you can sit there and, you know, just like a cat would just come and lay on your lap, um, a horse can also come and put his nostril on your shoulders. And it's not about riding. Open up and just experience it. And then you would feel the essence. Yeah, because the inception is okay. How much is a horseback ride? You know, this is this is not really the question I like to hear. I offer an experience with being with horses, which is really healing with horses. It's just like a, a horse can give you as much as, a, you know, a cat. When a cat lays on your belly, then it needs to be there because your belly needs it. <laughs> that is one of the best feelings in the world trust me yeah there is so much unconditional love without wanting anything back and you just want to surrender that yes and you feel that peace and this is all we need to feel especially right now in that moment you know it's like um they help you to meditate on life and the simplicity and on the beauty which surrounds us. Every moment and every day, we just have to really wake up and see and don't complain so much. (laughs) Indeed. Um, Well, as we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to say just in general about about animal welfare in Trinidad and Tobago? I um, feel we are on on a good way. There are some really great organizations and some really great people who are linked up just like Animalia. We need to collaborate and connect more, raise awareness. Healing with Horses is getting a lot of help, for example, from animal welfare, from the from the shelter, from from you, from Venus Doggers of Love, some from from people who really love animals. And um when we keep on working strongly together, we can raise the vibration and the awareness. And this is the most important thing, even even if it's in baby steps, but um, it's going, you know, Um, just like I got invited by you. Thank you very much. This is the way to go, that we open our doors and we communicate about the goodness animals bring in our lives. Very well said. I I couldn't have said it any better. (laughs) And I have to thank my previous guest, uh, Dr. Bartholomew, for recommending you. I definitely need to plan a visit the next time I'm in Tobago, hopefully very soon. I think that will be my first stop (laughs) from the airport. Okay. We are, we are, and that's what we're trying to create on, on Animalia, that, that community that can help and support each other. And as you said, you know, to, to share the good stories and the, the, the positives of being with and caring for animals. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, Veronica, for your time and agreeing to appear and speak with us on Animalia. We wish you all the best. How can people find you and get in contact with you if they want to be with horses in Tobago. We are on Instagram being with horses Tobago as well there is a page healing with horses Tobago. We are on Facebook you find us on healing dash with dash horses or being dash with the dash horses and then we also have some YouTube channel you know, being with horses and healing with horses. So just type it in and a lot of stuff will come up. And uh, our Love and Magic Info Center is open from 8 until 12 in the morning, um, where we sell little souvenirs, where we give out information. Presently, we sell manure. We have a lot of people who come and, you know, start their own home garden. So that helps us to maintain everything. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meet you all. Thank you so much, Veronica. Greetings and keep up. 
the good work. Looking forward to welcome you and share our space with you. Being with horses doesn't only offer a safe haven to the equine, but to the canine and feline as well. A pretty boy dog with a girly name needs a forever home. So here's Veronica's Rescue Me. Okay, there's Faith. Um, he is um, a small bred Tobago Terrier. He has um, a look like a miniature husky. <laughs> And <laughs> very sensitive, you know. I sometimes call her her because the personality he has is more like a she. And uh, she has a tough time in our park. So that's why I would love for him to have a new home where he is maybe the only dog. He's about uh, three years old. My commentary this week, which will be brief, is about the inhumane and irresponsible practice of dumping animals who either are unwanted or unwell. I've seen several stories in the past week of animals, dogs and cats, being dumped at various locations across Trinidad and Tobago by owners who clearly have no sense of decency. One dog rescued by last week's guest, Michelle Mahabir, was left in a remote area in South Trinidad. She was a pedigree dog, a mastiff, in very bad condition. She was so sick, either from an illness that her owners were unwilling to treat or from being homeless with nothing to eat, that she passed away two weeks after she was rescued. Then there's the ongoing problem of cats being dumped at the Karani Bird Sanctuary, where the population is growing larger by the day. And although there are some caring citizens who feed, spay, neuter, and attempt to rehome some cats, the dumping continues unabated. The call for widespread education comes to mind, but my question is, who will take responsibility to do it? It can't be the many individuals and organizations who struggle to keep their doors open and to rescue the many animals in need. But the state, for all the legislation we now have for animal cruelty, has yet to implement any educational drive, even on the very laws they're so proud to have written. One would think that if it becomes an offense to starve or otherwise ill-treat an animal, that every animal owner should be aware of the offense and remedy any situation that might result in them being arrested, charged, or fined. Another approach the government could take would be to give annual subventions to animal rescue organizations so that they might conduct the education that animal owners so desperately need. From basic information about spaying and neutering, to vaccinations, to nutrition and shelter. We can only keep advocating for the change we want to see and keep supporting those who are doing the thankless work of animal rescue. Many thanks to Veronica LaFortune for her efforts to integrate horses into Tobago life while providing a sanctuary for these special animals and, as she said, helping them to find their purpose. Join us in two weeks for another interview with an amazing person doing their part to advance the cause of animal welfare. I'm Natasha, and until next time, take good care and remember... Love off your pets. Bye-bye. Magic